drugs are bad and look at this look at this and they're going into Afghanistan to save the women guns and poppies this is gotta be Afghanistan guns and poppies look at this look at this card number 15 Afghan Mujahideen this is an amazing story gang if you've never looked into the origins of the Afghan Mujahideen it starts off in the 1970s okay and it's incredible it's incredible okay and very much the connected to what is happening in the world right now card number 15 afghan mujahideen after 1978 af after a 1978 marxist coup the government of afghanistan mounted an anti-narcotic campaign against the opium growing mujahideen tribal groups near the pakistan border as these fundamentalist muslims stepped up opium production to finance their resistance to marxist rule the soviets invaded afghanistan to prop up the government the cia used pakistan's military to funnel arms to Mujah to the mujahideen rebel leaders shipped tons of opium out of the same pipeline in 1984 despite full knowledge of these drug deals the U.S. pledged to give Pakistan's ruler, General Zua, Zua Ohag, $5 billion in military aid. Two years later, the United States Department admitted Afghanistan was the world's top producer of opium for export. Zai's chief minister, personal banker, and pilot were all implicated in the trade. By 1988, when the Soviets left Afghanistan, 100 heroin labs were operating in Pakistan. And as had happened to U.S. forces in Vietnam, thousands of Soviet troops went home hooked on heroin. By 1989, Southeast Asia's, Asia's Golden Triangle had resumed leadership of the world's opium production. By, with Burma, by far the leading source 2600 tons in 1989 burmese drug lord khan sa an ethnic chinese controls the lion's share of this production and supplies the hong kong triads who make china white a pure form of heroin which counts for 70 percent of the world's supply wow burmese general ni win learned uh the nori noriega and southeast asia the noriega and southeast asia is on the take his violent regime murdered thousands of pro-democracy demonstrators in 1988 assistant secretary of state melvin levinsky admits to uh admits ni wen's drug dealing ways but adds quote we have no plans for any kind of military action it would violate another country's borders and gold <laughs> crazy crazy and this card keep in mind came out in 1991 right in the 1990s opium production in a huge way drifted back into afghanistan where afghanistan was supplying the lion's share of opium to the world by the late 1990s now when the Taliban sort of the took over Afghanistan they destroyed the opium production in Afghanistan if you look at the numbers the charts okay in 2000 opium production in Afghanistan have dropped 2000 2001 opium production had dropped to a trickle in Afghanistan okay what happened after that was 9-11 and the u.s nato invasion of afghanistan and occupation of afghanistan almost every year since within a year really opium production had 
basically gone back one to two years of the US NATO invasion of Afghanistan opium production have gone back to pre Taliban levels in the mid 1990s before at the end of 1990s when the Taliban killed the opium uh, production there they had gone to that level and almost every year since opium production in Afghanistan has been a record production year under NATO occupation under NATO occupation what is being described right now in 15 cards of a 36 set of cards of the drug war trading cards the straight dope on America's dirtiest deals okay is continuing to this day connect that up with the leak that came out from the Washington Post of all places where it shows that all US administrations that have come since the invasion of Afghanistan have been coming out and saying that they're winning win, winning the drug war have been lying to the American people that every administration knows that the war is unwinnable they're just there to occupy Afghanistan and one of the reasons they're there to occupy it should be clear by now is because the US military is the largest supplier of drugs in the world right as per Gary Webb's the Dark Alliance report that came out which basically is a must read for anyone that wants to understand what is going on in the world okay I just had to put in a little filler since these cards came out because uh, these cards were in 2021 right now they're 30 years behind I would love to see the drug war trading cards part two maybe someday maybe someday 